Okay, so now um, the next thing is now you have your sole prop, you have your business, uh, whether you've decided to start a business or a sole prop. What are the kinds of tax out there that we are paying? What type of tax do people need to look at over and above just income tax? Because yeah, so people get confused. Okay. What's that? What's income tax? Uh, all of these capital gains tax. What kind of taxes are there? Yeah, okay. People do think if they're registered with SARS, they are registered for. Everything, Everything with SARS, and that's not the case. Um, if the chances are, if you're registered with SARS, you're registered for income tax. Um, there are other taxes as well. Pays you earn. So pays you earn is a withholding tax. That tax doesn't belong to anybody. It does not belong to the employer, nor does it belong to SARS. It's just um, basically a pass through, deducting and paying it over. Mm. Okay, pays you earn. You register for when you have employees. Um, as an employer, as yes. a business owner. Yeah. Um, an individual will never have to worry about registering for pay as unless you have a business and you have employees. Even if that business is a sole prop, if you start employing people in that sole prop, you have to then register for PAYE. That's correct. With the pay as you earn registration, you can register for UIF and SDL as well. That is um, just because you've registered for UIF and SDL with SARS does not mean that that is the end of your statutory requirement. Uh, 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 um, requirements you need to submit documentation to the Department of Labor as but, well that's okay. beyond my scope of expertise yes. um, but if you register for pay as you earn that's when you deduct uh, taxes from your employees Please. and pay it over to SARS um, another one that you will most probably deal with is VAT oh, yes um, so a lot of people come to me and they're like I want to register for VAT and I'm like but why mm. it's like they're applying for this tender and the tender said they need to give a VAT registration certificate it's like VAT is a very admin intensive um, tax um, so my advice to people is wait until so the legal requirement is if a tw- your annual turnover for any 12 month period doesn't need to be your financial period it doesn't need to be um, a calendar year but any consecutive 12 month period exceeds, so it's a rolling 12 months basically that's correct mm. if it exceeds 1 million rand your income that's yes. which you invoice clients exceeds 1 million rand then you are legally required to register for that if you do not meet that minimum requirement, do not register for VAT because people get fixated on this input VAT. They can claim VAT. Mm. Um, but chances are, if you have a lot of inputs um, and you charge clients, then you're probably going to pay more to SARS than what you can deduct mm. against it. Mm. You might now and again have a capital expense, a large purchase for the business with a big input. But one month's claim from SARS on a VAT purpose is not going to justify registering for of VAT. Because if you look at a 12-month period, you're going to lose six, out. Yeah, it's six VAT returns that needs to be done, paid for, all of these kind of things that's going to cost you. And exactly. um, yeah, and the, uh, there, was a, there was a thought that I had when you were talking about the, the VAT, um, the input. I think when, when you have companies that... Uh, like high manufacturing companies that that buy a lot of stock and a lot of um, uh, things to manufacture with or retail companies where there's a lot of stock that needs to be bought then I think that is is more beneficial if you want to because you've got a lot of input tax oh uh, it's in- input input input, yeah. input VAT. always get confused which one is the output and which one is the input uh, but if you're a service-based company that basically uh, you're a hairdresser so a hairdresser doesn't have a lot of stock and things like that it's more service based then you're probably going to have more issues with your vat than what you're actually going to benefit from the vat am i right saying that no that's correct and vat is a constant it's a moving thing Mm. so um I would always recommend if someone registers for VAT, get yourself an accounting system because you need to keep record of those inputs and outputs. Mm. Um, um, but once again, it's cost. It's uh, additional admin. You're probably going to have to pay someone to do this as well because you want to focus on the business parts. So once again, VAT, if you do not need to register, please do not register. If someone asks you for a VAT registration certificate, just tell them, sorry, I'm not legally, um, Does I don't meet the legal obligation to, to register, registered, yeah. um, your cost will still remain the same for them. There's yeah. no, they, your customer is not going to lose out on anything unless they're not um, 
yeah, if you're VAT registered, if your client is not VAT registered, yes. they're going to lose out. But if you're not VAT registered, your client's not definitely not going to lose out on anything. And that's the, the, the thing. What people must also just remember, if you are not VAT registered, you cannot charge somebody VAT. That's you correct. You can't put VAT, uh, a VAT amount on your invoice if you are not VAT registered, because I've seen that before as well. We, they charge somebody 10,000 Rand uh, plus 1,500 or 1,000, yeah, 1,500 Rand, 1,550. Uh, VAT and then but they're not VAT registered so you can't do that that's fraud that's that's tax fraud what I tell people usually if you're not VAT registered don't mention the name tax or VAT on your invoices Mm. there are specific legal requirements that an invoice need to meet to be a VAT invoice valid VAT invoice yeah that's correct so don't put their tax invoice don't put their VAT invoice don't put their inclusive of VAT exclusive of VAT or VAT value just say invoice and total and the amount that's it 